Welcome to Accounting Marketing Doesn't Suck. Join host Hugh Duffy as he takes you behind the scenes with successful accountants, CPAs, and industry elites in conversations about growing a more profitable business. This podcast is meant to prove that accountant marketing truly does not suck and, in fact, can provide you with new skills to improve your effectiveness so you can learn how to develop a business that you want to run, not a business that's running you. Welcome to the Accounting Marketing Doesn't Suck podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Build Your Firm, an accounting marketing firm that started back in 2003 that helps accountants work smarter, not harder. I'm your host, Hugh Duffy, co-founder of Build Your Firm, and on today's show, we'll be talking to Eric Myshack, Chief Strategy Officer for Beach Fleischman, which is a top 200 CPA firm in the United States. I'd like to share some insights on Eric before launching into the podcast. Eric has been the Chief Marketing Officer with Beach Fleischman for six years and was recently promoted to Chief Strategy Officer. He's been in that position for six months. Prior to his role at Beach Fleischman, he was Director of Marketing for Freed Maxit in Western New York for nine years, which is a top 100 firm. Eric has been selected to the Association of County Marketing's Hall of Fame in 2018. He's been recognized as a Marketer of the Year in 2015 by Inside Public Accounting and recognized as one of the top 100 most influential people in the accounting industry by accounting today. With that not so brief introduction, it is my pleasure to introduce Eric Myshat. Welcome, Eric. Hey, Hugh. Thanks for extending the invite. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be talking with you. And I love the name of the podcast. And it it affirms what I've been saying for years, that accounting marketing definitely does not suck. And it's truly a dynamic profession, offering a ton of opportunity for for marketers. So thanks for highlighting this. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it and learning more about your background. And thanks for the shout out on the title as well. <laughs> in uh, in your words, Eric, can you paint a picture for our listeners about what you're trying to accomplish at Beach Fleischman? Sure. Um, what are we not trying to accomplish, right? I mean, everything that you read about in trade journals and on the blogs really is same thing here. It's impacting our firm here. Everything from innovation to succession to relevance. So we're just we're continuing to advance our journey on becoming a purpose led organization. And that purpose really informs the decisions we make. So it's crystal clear to all who work with us as to the why we do what we do. And, you know, I guess the upside of running a firm that way is that it gives our staff a sense of belonging and it affirms that their contributions matter. Um, And so I believe that if firms don't have a purpose, then they're doing nothing more than selling time and grinding out long hours, which is not what we're here to do. I think long term, some of the things that we're working on, and I think a lot of firms are working on, is transformation. Um, in our case, we want to be a top 100 firm. And um, so, so a lot of that is going to mean that we're going to have to disrupt ourselves, uh, essentially, in order to do that. So some of the things we're looking at would be like diversifying our product and service offerings. Um, we're actually doing something major here, which is changing our business model away from hourly billing, which I know you've had some guests on your show that have maybe talked about that. Um, redesigning our service model um, so that we can offer integrated solutions. And that's a really complex thing because then you have to start looking at how you incentivize staff and how we're structured internally and how we define and measure success. Um, And then other things. So we're primarily an Arizona firm with two offices, but we need to expand our footprint in order to be, uh, in order to scale our growth. So some of the things we're looking at are, you know, how are we going to attract and onboard clients all over the U.S. or internationally? Um, So a lot of it's related to our service model and technology, especially cloud technology. So we're working on a lot of that. And then I, I would say, lastly, you know, we want to prepare ourselves for disruption or continue to prepare ourselves for disruption. So, you know, we want to get a handle on some of the some of the things that are impacting the industry and also some of the things that you've been talking about um, with, you know, artificial intelligence and automation and those types of things. Eric, can you go into a little bit more detail about what you mean by purpose led firm? Sure. Um, we're actually modeling, I guess, this um, approach based on uh, Simon Sinek's Start With Why. And he makes the claim that, that the most successful companies really lead with their purpose as to 
you know, why they do what they do. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. And that's really a, a big differentiator. Um, you know, we don't go to market and say, oh, we're the biggest firm or we're the, you know, we've got the most depth. We actually lead by talking about what we're here to do. And in our case, it's about the, the uh, power of collaboration and what it can accomplish. So, and like I said earlier, it gives people a, a sense of belonging, um, gives them a, a, a higher purpose, if you will. Um, it also acts as a filter if, if for us, not only for hiring the right types of people, but also onboarding the right, the, the types of clients and the right clients that do want, that do believe in that and want to work with us in that way collaboratively. So, um, that's what we mean by that. And what's towards the top of the list in terms of expanding your footprint? Uh, interesting idea. Uh, I know a lot of big firms think about, it. a lot of small foreign firms don't. So explain that. Well, I don't know that we're looking at a traditional approach of, you know, expanding necessarily with the, our physical footprint. Um, but we want to use, um, through digital transformation, we want to use those channels to actually appeal to clients all over. So, you know, you really got to kind of dissect your service model. Well, can we attract clients, number one? Yes, we can do that through the web, through digital, through social, through SEO, search engine optimization. How do we onboard them? Do we have the right the right platforms? Do we have cloud technology? Um, we want to essentially be able to accomplish everything we do in the physical realm uh, in the digital space. So we really want to create a scenario where there's no gap between, you know, the Beach Fleischman experience in person where our offices are and then the Beach Fleischman experience online. We, we want to be able to offer the same promise and and serve clients and offer solutions um, remotely, really. So that's that's what we're talking about there. Gotcha. That's great. And and how has the firm evolved over the last six or seven years? Wow. I think, gosh, there's been so much change, right? It's it's all over the place. I think number one, maybe culturally, I think we've done a good job setting the expectation that change is good and change is necessary. Although that's not to say that uh, it's been easy. It's definitely hard, but we know how crucial it is to our long-term success. Um, we we have started our journey on moving away from the billable hour into you know, and that's really focused on time, time-based inputs, and we're we're focused more on results right now uh, and pricing work in advance. I think that's critical, especially in in an era now where. The work that we're doing is taking less and less time every year because of disruptive technology. So if you're on a time-based model, um, you're going to do the work a lot quicker. Um, and if you're charging by the hour, you know, you've got to figure out another model. <laughs> yep. um, and then also just some of the other things that you read about. I mean, we've gone through a, um, a significant effort on our succession plan and I would say over the last six years, we've had succession at every level of our firm, from CEO to president to all of our department heads, um, industry group heads, as well as internal operations. So, you know, with that big change comes an influx of new ideas. Um, so that's another big change that we've seen. Um, six or seven years ago, we were just breaking into the Phoenix market with just a couple employees and we now have uh, an office out there that's thriving. I think we have upward towards of uh, maybe 40 team members. Um, and on the marketing side, we transformed our model from traditional selling and traditional marketing that um, firms have done for decades to, you know, all things digital. So our website is the hub of everything we do, our mobile, our social efforts, um, are really starting to pay dividends for the firm in terms of how we go to market, how we attract clients, how we generate leads, and how we generate revenue. Um, I would say the last thing that we're working on now is just really diversifying our firm and to get into other areas that are not accounting, things like HR and technology and marketing and some other industry-specific consulting. So mm -hmm. a lot going on. And, and how big is your marketing team? So I'm the marketing partner, um, and then I have a team of five. Um, and so we have a marketing manager who runs the day-to-day -day of the department. Uh, we have a dedicated web developer. 
So he builds and manages and maintains all of our digital assets. Um, we have a graphic designer on, on staff. And we have a part-time marketing coordinator who just started, um, I want to say, six months ago. And then we have an affiliate company um, called Pinnacle Plan Design, where we have a full-time marketer slash practice development person. Um, so, And then we also have a whole extended team of consultants and independent contractors that we've used, whether it be writers um, or other agencies and things like that. And, and we actually have... Um, you know, Michelle Golden, who is one of your past guests, is mm-hmm. somebody who's worked with us in the past and will continue to work with. So, I mean, they're part of our team, and um, we're not a, we're not afraid to to work with the best and bring the best into the firm to take us to the next level. Well, that's great. And what are some of the marketing tra- trends that you're trying to capitalize on for 2019? Well, um, well, some of the things that we're looking at now is. A lot of other firms are working on this too, but those client experience initiatives, client loyalty and satisfaction. So um, we're going to be really digging into that for 2019, starting to measure it. Um, so and start to develop, you know, a structured program around that, and to really study, you know, what the clients care about, um, when they care about it. Um, what the experience is like, and then try to try to really define what that is and what type of value we're bringing. So that's that's going to be a big project on our radar. Um, automation and AI platforms um, are starting to work their way into into the lot of, a lot of the uh, the programs we use, whether it's marketing automation. Um, I've been looking at things like chat bots, you know, because I find that pretty interesting to really um, truncate the the process of, um, you know, uh, qualifying um, leads and directing users on the website to the right place at the right time uh, and to really shorten that period of time so that we can turn things around quicker for them. Um, Content marketing is always going to be on our radar. It's it's pretty much, um, you know, uh, the dominant factor of of our marketing department and we lead lead with um, content really. And uh, it's just a huge part of, of what we do. And then, you know, over the years, we've dabbled in influencer marketing. And I wouldn't mind trying to really formalize more of a, a program like that. That's, you know, really finding the folks that are the ambassadors of the firm who uh, rave about our firm and forming more structured relationships with them and, you um, and, and seeing how that can can work for the benefit of us and, and them and, and the constituents that we deal with. So those are the things that are on our radar from a marketing perspective. And you're thinking about approaching it the influencer side from the client side and identifying some well-known clients of yours? I think it's all of the above. I mean, some of them are clients. Um, some of them are, are referral sources or just folks in the community. So. Um, I know we've done some things with, um, you know, guest blogging. Um, we've had some people just organically refer us work. And just those are the types of things that we want to really focus on and, and start to, again, back to our purpose, build collaborative relationships. So, um, yeah, all things that, that are on our radar for 2019 and into 2020. And you're also working on some new ventures. Can you talk about that? We want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, BizPayo, which is short for Business Payments Online. Maybe you've seen some of their advertising elsewhere or the feature article in Accounting Today. Here's why accountants across the country are big fans of BizPayo. BizPayo is an online system for sending out engagement proposals and then getting paid on autopilot. If you hate chasing existing clients for payment, then BizPayo is a tool you need to have in your arsenal. Here are some of the amazing reasons why BizPayo is so popular. BizPayo's engagement tool enables you to send out proposals and client agreements. Once approved by your prospective client, it enables you to get paid electronically going forward with less effort so you don't need to chase clients for payment. BizPayo accepts recurring and one-shot payments online, both e-check, credit card, and debit card payments with less hassle. 
BizPayo enables you to get paid by credit card and debit card payments at $0 net cost. This is very different than PayPal, Intuit Merchant Services, and other payment systems that take a fee in excess of 3% of each payment to you. BizPayo enables you to recover those fees so you get paid for plastic charge card payments at $0 net cost. BizPayo also syncs with QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop, so all your payments are posted seamlessly. With BizPayo, there's no nickel and dime charges either. There's no equipment costs, no processing minimums, no PCI charges, and so on. So go to BizPayo.com, that's B-I-Z-P-A-Y-O.com, and get paid in full like you deserve. Sure, yeah. Uh, we're excited about this. In uh, effective January, we launched a joint venture. Uh, and it's a virtual firm uh, called Mod Ventures. And we teamed up with a virtual client accounting service services and advisory firm called GML CPA. And uh, their CEO is Gabby Luma, who you may have heard of. Um, she's a big influencer in our industry in the accounting profession. So we teamed up and we launched a new company with Gabby. And uh, that's effective January. So it's essentially client accounting and advisory services, outsource CFO, that, that type of thing. Um, and it's a virtual firm, so we have remote staff and we can serve clients really anywhere. And the interesting part of that is, you know, having that business and then having a top 200 firm uh, backing it up to offer expanded services where clients might need it. So if they're doing multi-state or they want to go international, we can certainly help them with that. And some of the specialty consulting that Beach Fleischman offers now, we can integrate in, into that offering. So, um, very excited about that, and um, looking forward to what that venture can can do for us. That's interesting, and our and our clients. Yeah, no, oh, that's that's really neat. Um, culturally, was it difficult to uh, to do a JV? Uh, well, an outside culture, outside company, different, you know, uh, history, that kind of thing. Well, there's no question when you have a, a a firm of the size of Gabby's, they tend to be pretty entrepreneurial, pretty nimble and, and quick, right? Um, and we're a large firm, although we have that same spirit, entrepreneurial spirit. I think the the thing that we liked was that we both believed in the same things, um, and that's really the most important thing. So, in that sense, the cultures are aligned. You know, we have this. We have the same goals. We believe in the same things. We believe in transforming the profession. We believe in shifting the business model. Um, so, you know, that's about as much alignment, I guess, as you can have, right? Is is believing in the same thing? It, it is. It is. And you know, some organizations are good at that. Some organizations struggle with different cultures, trust. You know, sharing information. Um, setting up a independent, you know, company. Right. Um, it's, you know, it's risky. It's not, it's not comfortable for most organizations. That's the reason I ask. Yeah. And, and I get that. And we had, uh, you know, Gabby was a known quantity to us and our firms were friendly to each other and, you know, uh, shared the same clients. Um, Gabby was, is well known in the profession involved in the AICPA and things. So she was was a known quantity and she was right in our backyard. It just made sense. And let's kind of go in a different direction. Have you found it difficult and challenging to truly differentiate a large CPA firm from your competitors out there? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's definitely challenging. Um, so I, I'm I'm really thinking that the, the billable hour thing that most firms use to price their work with clients and that experience that clients have with the billable hour is, is not where we want to be in the future. So that is one big differentiator is we're approaching the relationship in a different way. Um, we are pricing the work before we get started and we're, we're starting to do that. We're offering options on how the customer would like to work with us. So we give them three tiered options and we haven't adopted it fully. I mean, we're still at the beginning of the process, but that's something that's really going to reform everything and how we go to market, um, how we recognize success, the types of metrics that we have. So um, 
that's a big thing. And I think it's going to benefit, obviously, the customer who's going to get a whole different type of experience that way. And I would say the other thing is, is that we're, we just launched a new brand um, a couple months ago. And our brand is really about our purpose. And so when we go to market, you know, we're not going to market and saying the typical things that firms might do, like, oh, we're the largest firm in Arizona, or we have the most depth. I mean, those are all, or we have, you know, great service, right? Every firm says that. (laughs) We're really talking about the experience of working with Beach Fleischman and what people can expect. So um, that's what we're really, we're, we're doing. We're giving people a glimpse into what it might be like to work with us. So we give them a heads up. And so we have four core values and we're really focused on those things. And those are the things that we're really talking about in the marketplace. And are there particular verticals or services that you guys are best at? Well, we're in Arizona in the Southwest and it's a high growth area of the country. So as a result, there's a lot of construction and a lot of real estate. And those are big practices for us. And then healthcare too. I mean, Arizona is a, is a, is a destination place mm-hmm. and a lot of people come here to retire. It's got a, you know, a significant healthcare industry here in the state. So, and a lot of healthcare facilities, doctors, practices, hospitals, those types of things. So, uh, between healthcare, real estate and construction, those are our three biggest niches. And yeah, let's, let's put your marketing cap on. I mean, from a marketing perspective, you know, what medium? Do most CPA firms overlook and underutilize? Well, I'm biased here. I'm, I've been doing search engine optimization for, well, really since the late 90s. I mean, a long time. And I've been a practitioner, practitioner of it for a long time and have taken advantage of it on behalf of my firms. And so I, th- I think there are a lot of firms that haven't realized the full potential of it. And the firm struggle with a strategy for that. So um, I think that's really an overlooked or underutilized approach. And I'm really talking about stuff on the organic side of things as opposed to paid or paid SEM or social, you know, uh, marketing like sponsored posts and things like that. Although I do think that's important. You know, I believe in a combination of, mm-hmm. you know, nice organic content that's unique and that offers a lot of value combined with some paid. Um, that's a deadly combination. Totally agree. And uh, as I mentioned to you, I've seen some of your prior work as well in your prior life, which is great. And uh, let's let me take a little deviation and go down the path of, you know, I'm going to assume most of our listeners are not familiar with some of the work you've done in your prior life. Uh, which is where, you know, you first basically had your coming out and became famous with a particular promotion at Freed Maxit, which was a Twitter promotion. Can you educate our clients and our listeners about uh, what you did there and the impact that it had at Freed Maxit? Sure. Yeah. The firm's been very good to me over the years and they allowed me to to talk about this. They're proud of it just as much as I am about this Twitter thing that we did. I think it was probably about 10 years ago now. Um, it started off as there were new electronic billboards being placed in, in Western New York. And they were dynamic in the sense that they could take a feed from something. So I work with a pretty enterprising uh, outdoor sales rep from Lamar. And um, we decided to put up a Twitter billboard which was dynamic and essentially it piped in the feed from the firm's Twitter account and we could change the content on the board real time. And so we were commenting on things that were happening in the news or in the city or business type things. Um, And then we launched shortly after that a Facebook billboard that had the same idea. Um, Now with the Facebook billboard, we basically, we didn't really talk about ourselves. We were talking about community organizations and non-for-profits and we gave them a run of the board every day. So we had this whole promotion where we would invite these nonprofits to come to our website, register to be part of the campaign, and then, you know, they'd go through a vetting process and then we'd put them on the board for a day. Um, so I want to say a year or so after that, we entered um, and were accepted into a beta program at Twitter itself 
for this is when they were um, developing their promoted products platform, so promoted tweets. And this is before they had an advertising platform. They brought in a group of companies to help them test it and to work with their product engineers and product managers and give them feedback. So we got accepted into the program, and Freed Maxic was one of just a couple hundred companies in the world that were testing this platform. And in that group were Fortune 500 companies, you know, the big companies, the credit card companies. And, I, you know, I remember um, I think MGM was in there. And um, there were some other just well-known brands that were there. And then there was this small accounting firm in, in Buffalo that was in it. But the reason why that thing was really interesting is we got to give them feedback on, on the features of the program and what we liked and what we didn't like. And, you know, so some of the some of the suggestions we made are now part of the platform today, which was really interesting. And then we went on using those promoted tweets. We went on to sponsor a um, presidential primary debate. And this was back in 2011 when the primaries were happening. And interesting, Hugh, because we we had prepped for the debate and we had all sorts of goodies for folks to download um, from Twitter. So as you know, there was a like a, essentially a hashtag mm-hmm. for it for the for the debate, and I think it was on CNN, and um, we were sponsoring that hashtag. And as the candidates were debating, we were putting certain white papers into the hashtag that people could download. So we had the tax plans of the candidates. Um, we, we had overviews of legislation and things like that. And the amount of, I guess, conversions we had, we were getting several hundred downloads a minute of these things that were on our website. Anyway, we grew our followers from like 1200 to, I think it might, might've been like 23,000 in the span of like six months. And the account became, um, uh, verified. And it was just a really good way to take a, a local firm and make a national brand out of it. And I think that's what we did. And can you share some of the results or the impact it had for Freed Maxit from a business perspective? From a business perspective, we got a lot of earned media value out of it, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, Mashable, um, I think, talked about what we were doing with Twitter, um, Success Magazine, picked up an item. Um, certainly all the accounting trades were, were talking about it and there's a value to that stuff. It's you know, essentially exposure that we couldn't afford to buy otherwise. Um, we got a lot of entrepreneurial type business owners that became um, clients of, of the firm. So there were several hundred thousand dollars worth of, of new engagements and, and that, um, you know, as a result of, of that, of that campaign, uh, and it just got us on the radar of companies that normally maybe wouldn't have taken a look at us. Mm. It's a great story. Um, let's let's make another little tangent. Outside of the CPA firms that you've been part of, which we've gone into, what CPA firms have done a top-notch job in your opinion? Well, there's a lot of great ones out there. Um, I would say in, in general, I'll start off by saying that any firm that's not afraid to question the norm or the sacred cows uh, and the old way of thinking. So certainly a lot of those entrepreneurial um, uh, client accounting and advisory services firms, those CAS firms that are doing it a different way really appeal to me, including our own mod ventures. Uh, as far as the larger firms, probably a lot of the ones that I've worked with for the past 15 years in the leading edge alliance that I've gotten to know those firms and those folks over the, over the years. Um, I have a whole bunch of them that I've, really admire. I mean, firms like Clark Newber, I love how they um, have really personalized their marketing by focusing on their people. Um, BPM out of, I think, San Francisco. They, I've really admired their international capabilities. Um, it's just so deep and they do much more than that. Um, there's a firm called Kiter out of Virginia that has a very strong culture. Um, Anders in Missouri, they really have their act together. Um, and they are superb marketing practitioners. Then there's some of the larger firms, um, like LBMC in Tennessee. 
I mean, they've scaled so fast over the years and they have such diverse offerings. You know, they're really incredible, really incredible firm. Markham, um, mm-hmm. Markham competes very well in the major markets with a lot, a lot of those, uh, large national firms and they're very strong with technology. Um, there's other firms, uh, PKF Texas, you know, they've always had this commitment to excellence that I've really admired. And then there's a bunch of firms that are outside of the LEA. Um, Keiko Isom, um, they're innovators with their business and pricing model. And also what I like about them is they really only commit to a few industry sectors, two or three, and you don't try to be everything to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, Horn mm-hmm. out of Mississippi, I mean, they really inspire their people. They've got a very progressive managing partner in Joey Havens who's worked hard to transform that firm. And then the one I find the most interesting um, is Armanino out of California. They're really a technology firm masquerading as a CPA firm. <laughs> so they're really heavy in technology. And then firms like Raymond Group, um, very forward thinking, have really focused on the customer experience. And I, I admire that as well. That's fabulous. Eric, I'd really like to thank you for opening, sh- sharing your story. Your journey has been amazing. Uh, there are many more chapters to be written. You're still young. I'm sure you're going to have some great new ideas. Hopefully, it'll be with your new venture. Uh, in closing, I'd like to thank Build Your Firm for creating and sponsoring the Accounting Marketing Doesn't Suck podcast and Liz Gold with Rhino Girl Media for encouraging us to produce this podcast. And uh, I'd like to, to wish you goodbye. Thanks.